She just That's fucked it up for the rest of us. <laughs> just fucked it up, man. Was she a white lady? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> she was a cis white lady. God, God damn it, damn Eve. It. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag, God damn it, Eve. <laughs> I remember seeing Oprah show once and it was why, way back, way back when she was first like really getting started and stuff. And I was watching her because she was talking about this, a lot of stuff around sexual abuse. And there was a woman who was on as a guest and she was talking about her experience of being raped. Then afterwards, uh, as a result of that rape, she became pregnant. And so she had to decide with her family, her husband, what they were going to do. And in this case, I think because of their religious uh, beliefs, did not want to do, um, get an abortion, have the child and raise the child in a loving way and sought counsel and everything. At the end of the show, when they said, uh, can we bring a little bundle of joy out here? So this is a white family and the little, the little baby is black. It just brought up a whole bunch of other stuff, you know. In addition to that being a very difficult decision, it made me think of the baby. Because you, you always have that question of, you don't have to tell the child, right? There's a question of, can't, do you tell the child? They didn't know the race of the harm to it because um, they, were, they were masked and gloved. Mm -hmm. And so they found out the race of the harm doer the day that she gave birth. They have a child that is of a different race and how do they explain this this child you know like so i was like so confused for them and also thinking a lot about the baby what what that experience must be to not only uh, be the product of that traumatic experience but to also be the only black child in a white family there's no easy clear-cut thing here but this was just like one story that popped out for me and i was like huh it's complicated very complicated right. and on top of it this child's story of birth is uh publicized and the show is made about right. it how open is the family about i mean they could always make up a story as to why she was adopted you know something like that they could say a story like that but what do you do when like at some point this child either through the tv or her friends or other people or family members reveal to her that this was your story of birth right mm -hmm. and that goes back to the question of um if you're a child of rape you know what does what does that mean what is the responsibility if any of uh the person who keeps you to talk to you about it uh should they not what is the impact as you're saying this it reminds me also of abortions that happen because of uh a known disability of the child of like a similar argument of like, oh what would you want to give a child give a birth to a child that has uh that you know is gonna have a certain disability and it's like do you really think the rest of the children who you don't who, who aren't born with a disability or whatever you think makes them less than perfect like is this like your idea of what a child like a human like do you not see how every human is born with like a whole set of traumas and flaws and like far from perfection mm -hmm. and like so we're gonna just single out the one who has some disability or the one who is you mm -hmm. know uh, a result of sexual assault yeah, we, we get very concentrated in right or wrong, uh, very absolute right mm -hmm. or wrong. And I just don't think that there's an absolute right or wrong here. It's too freaking complicated to uh, explicitly say that if you keep a child after being a victim or a victim survivor of a rape, mm -hmm. that you are a horrible person because you're bringing a child into the world in that way, or that right. you're not giving that child a chance, or that you're being selfish or that abortion is wrong you know let's 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 get everything else out of it people just you know shaming and stuff but think about the other aspect of people thinking abortion is just wrong so just yeah. don't do it even if you are raped you just don't do it because that is what's the whatever the argument is because it is a child it is murder it is killing right you're right. killing a child I have definitely witnessed 
a, a loved one uh, who has had to get an abortion because they, they were assaulted. A, a, a very deep loss and like a very, you know, triggering um, moment um, for, for a lot of us uh, that were involved in the situation. I was very young when, when that happened. Uh, it, it was my sibling who had to uh, get an abortion and it was, it was a situation where she didn't want to talk to, talk to anyone about it or let anyone know. And then at some point, there was a denial that it happened because of not wanting to break up the family, but also the issue of uh, not wanting our father, who was the abuser, to go to jail, and because he was also a police officer himself. So, you know, just a lot of devastating things that, like, young children aren't <laughs> really equipped to, to deal with. When I got pregnant, my first child's father beat me up when our child was, I don't know, like 10, 12 days old. He didn't just beat me, he beat me up while I was holding our child and he punched our child. I was like, it's not that he's just a spouse abuser, he's also a child abuser. Like there's a, there's a difference. They're not one in the same, but he's both. I also have had two abortions because I was afraid that my son, my, my oldest son's father would just have another child to abuse and use against me. And it wasn't even his baby, but he was stalking me during that time. And I felt like at the time there was no safe place for me or the child I had with him. So why would I bring another child into the world while I'm actively being stalked by someone who's physically abusive and trying to kill me. Also backed by this idea, I think, for people who come from a religious perspective, that the child, the conception of the child happened because of God's will. And that's that, which, which is, again, it's... <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, I just like... Like we're talking about the whole idea of, of violence versus the consequence of the violence. Right. And violence happens and we can identify violence as wrong and bad and traumatic and right. negative. But we can't really simply identify or put in a box the consequences of violence. For the most part, most people, the reason violence is bad is because it largely has bad consequences. Right. But also sometimes by just fucking random chance consequences of bad things are amazing and consequences oh, yeah. of great things are terrible so yeah. like that's life that's how it happens so like going to you know uh, people who yeah they may have a very traumatic experience of rape now the consequence of that is a pregnancy that they may be super into right. that they may be really yeah. excited about or they may decide to keep a child and because there's all these like ideas that if you keep a child like oh you, you forever you will be stuck being reminded of your perpetrator and uh, that will impact how you connect with the child and blah blah and it's like those are all true first of all for it's not like the ones who don't get pregnant are like forget right right <laughs> first of all exactly. right exactly and then second of all, like a lot of children are a result of terrible relationships, abusive relationships, even if the child isn't a direct result of rape, right, which again, right. there's a lot of that too, doesn't mean that they wouldn't remind you of the person from which the child came from, right? It's like, we want to think about this decision as like a very, it's, it's a decision that, it, that applies to a very small number of people in a very specific, a special circumstance. But really it's, it's like much broader than that. We did some research on like uh, people who um, get pregnant as a result of a sexual assault rape. And this particular, without me looking at the title, Bad Me, I looked at the numbers and it said, it gave a lot of good numbers. It gave a lot of good numbers like that almost every, all the women who have been raped and get pregnant, all, almost all of them want to keep the child. And most of them said that uh, 
where the, oh, the child was a victim as well. And they really painted a pretty picture and then put a nice bow on it. And then mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this is like really good. Let me check. And then it was one of these organizations that are, you know, <laughs> anti-abortion. Right. And that's what kept popping up. A lot of data specifically from the people who are anti-abortionists. So I don't trust that data. I don't trust it at all. <laughs> right. Right. And, I, and that uh, goes to the whole, like the bad survivor, right? You can't really make a good decision here. If mm -hmm. you keep the child, you're scrutinized for why did you keep the child and put yourself and the child through it. Right. And, and if you abort it, then you are like, how could you, you know, engage in this heinous act? It's like, why put that stigma on top of people who decide to keep uh, a child as a result of rape right. why make the, if you are understanding how complicated that decision is why make it more complicated by bringing in shame and stigma but on the on yeah. the other side of that too then we have people who like are very clear i want to have an abortion i do right. not want to keep and then it's the people saying no 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 you should not have an abortion yeah. because you are, you will murder, you know, you we will be committing murder and this would be horrible. And this child is, um, is also a victim. They should not be, you know, all of this stuff. So it's like they encourage to, to keep basically, like you said, there is no right choice either way. You're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> By, yes. you're, you're just, it's just messed up any, any way you cut it. If you have a uterus and you have a child, like there is just this, this thing between you and this, this child that will always be great and magical right. and amazing no matter what. Right. These lies, it's really these lies that you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're being told that this, the, the parent-child bond is, as I'm sure as unique, I'm, I don't have a child, but like, I'm sure it is the most unique thing but like love doesn't really justify the complexities of parenting or the decision to want to be a parent or right. the reality that so many parents look back and they're like, yeah, I love my child, but maybe no. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, know? it's so true. It's so true. It's like we get sold uh, this, um, this be beautiful story and it can be very beautiful as a parent. Yes, most, so many moments and stuff. And at the same time, whew, hard hard beyond belief you know like it is just not an easy thing for folks who do decide to keep they may love their child and everything is good but what about other people around their connection to other folks because um, I'm, I'm particularly thinking about the movie i saw called room and it was about a young girl who got abducted she was um sexually abused and raped throughout this abduction for many years and as a result she became pregnant had the baby in captivity afterwards she fled you know got out and got reunited with her family and at this point her son is probably five years old or something so she was in captivity for like eight years and her father was just like he could not even look at the boy it was just like, no, like I cannot accept this child as my grandchild because he's a part of him. And she was very clear, this is my son, like this is my son. But the mother asked him to leave, like they asked him to get out because they were like, yeah. you can't accept my son, which is like, so other people, their um, beliefs about it and the, you know, this ideas of monsters and DNA and monsters and all this stuff, like other people can make this really, really complicated and really hard when in fact, I think that anyone who decides to keep a child should have all the support, like have all freaking kinds of support and access available to them and their child. And, and it's interesting because it's a reminder of like how we view what makes, what a child is made of. What makes a child a child? Like there's so much focus on biological connection and DNA and all of that, right? And mm -hmm. this, these beliefs that like, oh, if you got the genes of someone shitty, then you'll, you'll end up shitty for sure. Versus the very reality, like a child is a child because of like they, they bond with whoever cares for them, loves mm -hmm. them or hurts them. There is that relationship yeah. absolutely takes over the, the biological aspect, right? And the very fact that like I would say like in this case, like, you know, it seems like what makes that five-year-old her child so much more than the fact that they share a DNA is that because she's she has been raising this child right, right. for five years, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It's like it's regardless of where where that child came from, how the child was conceived. I know one person who had their child, and 
I feel like they struggled with seeing the face of the person who harmed them in their child's face, but they, they really did the work um, and their child's a super smart, well aware, sex positive person and it worked out for the best. When I got pregnant with Riley, my first child, uh, I was had a lover at the time who was fairly new. Things were just getting going when I, I, you know, I'd been inseminating for a while and I got pregnant. He was like, I'm gonna build this nursery. I'm gonna be the best supporter. He was just totally thrilled about it. And I started having nightmares about him. I mean, I started having horrible, horrible nightmares like of like maggots all over my baby. And the uh, morning sickness I had when this person was around, it, 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 I mean, I started throwing up just being around them. And so I really felt like it was my survivor spidey sense around their appropriateness to parent and whatever would happen if I stayed in that relationship. And so I broke up with them. And later, indeed, they partnered with other people and there was stuff around how they were with that person's kids. Going back to the idea of like people almost forcing, especially when it comes to young girls who, mm. of course, children do not have any agency over their body because their parents make their decisions for them. Mm -hmm. So really a 13 year old and a 12 year old and an 11 year old could not say, I want an abortion. That's up to mommy and daddy, I guess, depending on where they live. But I think mostly everywhere. Yes. Yeah, you need to have permission from a guardian no or consent. parents, unless you're an emancipated minor. That there, it's like even that, it's like j just thinking about the violation on so many levels, mm -hmm. on so many fucking levels, like having no control whatsoever. And that folks saying like, it doesn't matter, 12 year old kid it's okay, have this child, you can give it up for adoption and stuff, not even considering the, the, the just the trauma that may be associated with that. I'm almost thinking about, it's about just thinking about the survivor. And when we start thinking about it in terms of how you were saying like killing a baby, mm -hmm. it changes the whole argument. It becomes a different fight. It doesn't become about the rape that just happened. It doesn't become mm -hmm. about the care of the person that needs it right now. It, it just ceases to exist. And it right. becomes about the fetus, child, human, how, all, all these ways that people have described the thing that's inside of the body. Yeah, that's actually, that's a really interesting angle of the, the child who is pregnant, whether the child is forced to abort or to keep and how that decision is made and the complexity of that again and the re-traumatization of it because like we were uh, in our research, what is showing is also like, if you have been raped, maybe getting an abortion, especially an abortion, a surgical abortion that involves whatever with your reproductive organs, it's probably not the most attractive choice. That process itself can be really re-traumatizing. So like thinking about all aspects of that, especially for minors who have to go through it. And then like that, that case you were saying that child or the teenager who wanted an abortion and then described mm -hmm. the abortion itself as more traumatizing than the rape mm -hmm. which is possible right that's possible right. but again that, that doesn't negate the reality that she needed an abortion or they needed an abortion they got their abortion right. and it's unfortunate that the abortion was traumatizing abortion can be very traumatizing oftentimes yes. not because of, because it's because of the event itself but right. because of so much around it so many beliefs and so many things again we don't know the details of this story but what i want to see is how would it look differently if we lived in a society where people who could get pregnant had full support around birth control reproductive care pregnancy care abortion care and then after the child is born around raising a child in that world would these decisions be as complicated as traumatizing as horrible and 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 you know, leaving people with scars, regardless of whether or not they were survivors. I um, have had an abortion myself, so I, I can speak to the experience of having an abortion, my personal experience, right? It was, and I, and I was going to say, it was not as a result of a rape. But then I thought about that. It is my, <laughs> my, going, my going into the bushes with uh, a guy that I hardly knew to bend me over and fuck me and, and get me pregnant when I was like, what, 15? 
is a direct result of my child sexual abuse. It is a direct result of the shit. I was not raped, but I was absolutely um, going through a lot of stuff in my body sexually and the decisions that I was making and stuff. So it was a complication of all of that. And I have to say, I, I got an abortion and it was super traumatic, but I would do it all over again. I would do it all over again, right? So I, I believe that that should be there <laughs> to have. Um, and even though I cried a lot and everything, I knew it was the choice that I had to make. Like I needed to do that. Years later, I often think that that trauma that I felt around having the abortion was actually really connected to guilt around how I was raised around abortion and religion. Mm -hmm. So it was guilt. It was actually like just guilt, like, oh my God, am I, am I gonna go to hell for this? And you know, is the baby in heaven looking down at me? Like it was totally around religion for me. A Couple of years later, I got pregnant with my daughter Mandy and I was happy. Even as a teenager, I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy I'm pregnant. So even though I was a teen mom and there was a lot of stuff that was happening inside my body, I was happy. But then the happiness shifted a little bit when the reality of my survivorship was coming into play because being pregnant brought up so much shit. It was so triggering. So even though, you know, I did not get pregnant as a result of a, a, mm -hmm. of a rape, years later, my pregnancy and therefore birth of my daughter and raising her was completely complicated mm -hmm. <laughs> and really, um, you know kind of molded a lot of the ways in which I raised her and right it's like if you are a survivor it's not just about whether or not you got pregnant as a result of that specific incident is how does that shift the entire way you look at pregnancy having children raising children having relationships um, having yeah. relationships it just impacts it literally impacts every part of your life and also the piece about having your genitals violated how that shifts the way that you you connect with your body and you protect your body and you use protection whether for mm -hmm. stis or pregnancy for a lot of survivors dissociating or disconnecting right. your genitals from your body that's a very common thing and you can fall into a place of not taking the steps necessary to to protect yourself mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I'm thinking about the how complicated this decision or just unique complications come up for a trans mask person who was raped and um, got pregnant as a result of that, mm -hmm. that decision. You know, again, super complicated. We have mm -hmm. no idea what is happening. It's, it's complicated by so many things, right? It's like, um, it's about their identity. It's about the possibility that this person was maybe thinking about having a child and or maybe about to have a histo or mm -hmm. whatever it is like it's it's like it really gets complicated and i'm also thinking about um, people with disabilities that are especially seen as people who cannot care for themselves get pregnant mm. and so who, what where the decision lies there and i'm assuming it is the caretaker of that person if they have power of attorney over like the they make medical decisions imagine if we were living in a society where uh, the process of birth control, pregnancy, abortion, and raising children was supported on a communal level, on a community yeah. level. And so people who with disability, people who are poor people, like all sorts of people who struggle simply because they don't have enough access and help right. and support. Right. How would that shift all these decisions? Which is really interesting because again, like going back to the anti-abortion movement people, God damn it, if you hate abortion so much, there's a very easy way to reduce them. And it's like, no, there is. Like, so, so there's like a lot of, I mean, what is the statistics? Like 80% of people who get abortions yeah. are married. Well, why the fuck are they getting abortions? Because they didn't have access to birth control mm -hmm. or because they were, in, they were in abusive relationships in yeah. which their partners didn't let them use birth control or didn't use a condom right. or maybe everything is fine, but they're, they can't afford having another mm -hmm. child. Yeah. But this is the reasoning. This is the thing. It's like, give me a good enough reason why you right. want to do this. Like you have to like yeah. validate, but there's no validation in this argument. Right. It's like nothing is good enough to have an abortion. 
I think right. the only time they say is if the mother is going to die by giving birth right. or something like that. That's right. it. That's it. Right. So I too am the child of a survivor. It was mentioned, but not talked about. Like we knew things happened, but we didn't know what things happened. Now I'm 42 and I am, I am my mom's favorite friend and she's in my top five friends. So I know like details that she wouldn't want anyone else to know. And so I know things that, that really no one should have to know because they, they went through awful stuff as children and then were parents who made sure that their children were super sex positive and super knowledge about sex, sexual assault, consent, autonomy, like all of the things. And so I vowed that my children would know what all of the different types of abuses are, non-sexual and sexual, at very, very early ages where everyone else in their life was like, you shouldn't tell them that, that's too brutal. It is brutal and they need to know it's fucking brutal so that when it happens to them, they're like, hey, you can't fucking do that, that's wrong. I'm not going to allow that. I deserve better. I intentionally brainwashed my children with positive affirmations so that they would believe that they're too fucking awesome to let someone do this awful shit to them. And so now present day, I have a 17 and 22 year old who are pretty cocky about their autonomy and their consent and their, their personal time and like all of the things that help you be a person who is less likely to succumb to other types of abuses for lack of knowledge. In thinking about survivors and this sort of kill or keep conversation, um, I think about my experiences in working at Planned Parenthood and working as a counselor, counseling uh, people coming in who are pregnant most of whom at that time had decided they didn't want to continue to be pregnant. At the time, I had a friend working at an anti-violence organization, and we always talked about how bizarre it was that these were seen as disparate issues, like the right to choose when to be pregnant and whether to continue to be pregnant, and gender-based violence, how they're both at their core talking about like people being safe in their own bodies and having control in their own bodies, and entities, whether it's individuals or states, trying to control the decisions or control what's happening within somebody else's body. And so for me, they feel like inextricably linked. If we're going to say that people need to be safe in their own bodies and they need to have control and agency over their own bodies, then that necessarily means that they need to be able to control if they get pregnant, when they get pregnant, whether they continue to be pregnant. And I think that that decision, regardless of what it looks like, has to be honored and protected and it also has to be seen within the context of um, decreasing violence and gender-based violence and violence against people who have the capacity to be pregnant. You got this one body that can create another person within it without your consent honestly that, that's mm-hmm. that's the thing that pisses me off the most <laughs> right right it's like if 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 it was true and you know what there are anti-abortion people who make that argument like you can't get pregnant as a result of rape if you didn't like it that's right like if you what? don't like yeah oh yeah there's some some great people out there <sighs> republic republican men especially I, i'm <laughs> Yes, that literally <laughs> have said the very reason you got pregnant as a result of rape is showing that it wasn't rape. Because if you don't want to get pregnant, you won't. The survivor herself or survivor themselves or the survivor himself mm-hmm. is not seen as the yeah. victim. It completely yeah. becomes about the child. That's it, right. not the person who is like, experiencing this, having to make the decisions, has to live with whatever decision that they're making and hopefully, you know, trying to get the, the support of their community, which we know, you know, can be quite difficult. Like, there's so right. much going on with this one particular person standing right in front of them. And then right. it's, it's all, it becomes a different fight, a different argument. I would personally have a lot more respect or I could take more seriously the anti-abortion movement if they showed that they truly understood and cared about the person that is having the abortion, the, the fact that the well-being of that person 
is not even discussed and regarded. It's only discussed in the sense that like if you get an abortion, you will be always emotionally scarred. And if you get an abortion, the lies that, that if you get an abortion, you can't get pregnant again. And if you get an abortion, all the way to like, you know, you'll go to hell, like all sorts of lies that are being told. But the well-being of the person mm-hmm. and, and their need for an abortion is just so disregarded. And I know there are some organizations that like provide homes for young people who are pregnant, mm-hmm. who have children. And, and I, you know what? Great. Keep doing that shit. Let's say you kept the pregnancy and now uh, as a survivor, the decision to disclose your survivorship to this child. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And whether to do it, when to do it, how to do it. Is it, is it again right or wrong to do it? Like that decision by itself is so complicated and nuanced as right. a decision to whether or not abort a child of, of rape. And preparing the child for that conversation at some point, you know, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe they're, when they're an older teenager, maybe when they're young adults, maybe when they're mm-hmm. older adults, at some point, maybe they will be ready to hear the, rea- the realness of that story. And, and that's not, again, unique to children of rape. A lot of children who grow up never knowing one of their parents because they, right. that parent was just so, for whatever reason, not present in their life. But a lot of parents carry dark stories about the other parents yeah with them their entire lives and always have to deal with this challenge this question of when do i tell the child how do i tell the child yeah the only way that i would know how to answer that is if i that was my experience and even then right. i'm sure it would be the most difficult decision because right. any way you decide i think it's difficult for so many levels and that 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 idea it's just that whole idea about like one answer for billions of people just doesn't make any sense and you know like come on thinking almost like the people like this the person who raped is monstrous and maybe not in the picture but what if the person is married to you know the person that raped them you know and so maybe you already have kids with this person you have two children and maybe the last child is a result of rape Now, that's a whole different story, right? There's no stranger. And maybe that child should never have to know because as far as they know, they're a result of a marriage, right? Mm -hmm. So that really is another personal choice, right? Is it it something that they keep? Is it something that they say? Is it necessary? I don't know. You know, that is definitely up to them, but that changes the scenario, right? That definitely changes it. If somebody is not, if they, you know, all of you have the same father, we were married for a little while. The trauma of the situation does not shift, right? But the circumstances really change how people actually think about it and what goes into making those absolutely difficult decisions. Penis owners, sperm producers who are raped and there is a child as a result of that rape. And of course, well, they're not, again, they're not carrying the child, so they don't they, they're not really faced with the decision. And it's, I don't see that as their place to be making a decision for someone else's body. But the reality and the hardship and the difficulty of as having something still being taken away from you in that way of, if, especially if that harm doer decides to keep the child and you having to live with the reality of a, a, a decision, a process you didn't even have a choice in, in yeah. any part of the process. There's a child as a result of rape of a, of a sperm producer, then the person who decides to keep the child is asking for child support. Wow, it's, that's a really, <laughs> yeah, because, because we already know that the percentages of, you know, um, cis men reporting sexual abuse as a child and as an adult is much, much lower that I suspect that wouldn't be reported. Um, let's just say it wasn't. There's no way to prove anything, right? And then that person is connected because if they do a blood test, they will know that that is the biological parent or or father. And legally, they would have to pay. Yeah. We are not talking about, well, what about survivors, male-identified survivors, penis-owning survivors, where there's a child as a result Mm -hmm. of the rape and their decision, their agency, their involvement in that process. There's absolutely no room for that conversation right now. Like, especially when you think about the narrative that so much we're told that like, if your relationship is broken and not working, try to get a child to come into it. And that mm-hmm. goes both ways, of course, you know, yes. uh, people who forcibly impregnate others to keep a relationship with them or uh, get others to make them pregnant to keep a relationship with them. 
mm-hmm. or or just don't use contraception when they say that right. they, they are. They did not. lying mm-hmm. about it, removing right. a condom, like all all of that. Yeah, which really um, speaks to a lot of like domestic violence stuff. For this episode, the question we have for you is how being a survivor do you think has possibly impacted uh, your approach to pregnancy, having children or raising children? Uh, And if you want to share any stories or wisdom with that, please uh, feel free to comment on this video or share it on social media and use hashtag heal to end hashtag caution series, hashtag bad survivors. And also Mm. don't forget to use hashtag uh, survivors who keep or kill. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel, ring the bell and give us a thumbs up. We'll see you next time. Yeah, bye. Oh, 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 oh,